So this problem, not sure if it's on your paper or not, but really, really make sure you uh, may want to write this stuff down and come in and ask questions tomorrow morning. Uh, these two free response are really designed to help you on the test. So the first one, I have a speed skater goes around a turn that has a radius of 31 meters. The skater has a speed of 14 meters per second and experiences a centripetal force of uh, 460. What is the mass? Well, I'm given force, um, and it's a centripetal force, so I would start with um, F net equals MA. So this is F uh, C equals MAC. Uh, from this, um, I need velocity, so F C equals M v squared over r. It's a pretty straightforward plug and chug problem. So that is 460 newtons equals the mass, which I don't know, times velocity uh, squared, which that gives me 14 squared divided by r, and r is 31 meters. All those are the correct units. Uh, you do your algebra, and we get uh, 460 times 31 divided by 14 squared. And I end up with uh, mass equaling 72.8 kilograms. The next problem is great for uh, practicing momentum. So let's take a read. A student is conducting a conservation of momentum experiment using two lab, two lab cards on a frictionless track. One card has a mass of 2.3 kilograms, the other has a mass of 1.5. Uh, the larger cart is initially moving on the track with a speed of 3.3 um, towards the smaller cart, so this is one we want to make sure we have, uh, is at rest. That's a piece a lot of people forget about that it is at rest, so the velocity equals zero. The carts have magnets that attract to each other, so the speed of each car increases. After uh, two seconds, the cart has a velocity of 5.5, and the second car has a velocity of negative 0.9 meters per second. What is the total momentum of the system initially? Well, momentum uh, equals uh, mv. Now, in this one, I had two separate objects, right? We looked at that. So the smaller car is at rest, so uh, the smaller car has a momentum uh, equaling zero. The larger car, okay, which is going to be just one of them, uh, has a mass of 2.3 and a velocity of 3.3. Right? So this would be mass is 2.3 and velocity is 3.3. So my momentum ends up with... 2.3 times 3.3. And so my momentum for the beginning, momentum initially of the whole system, uh, and that would be total, which is momentum of small plus momentum of large. But we said momentum of small is zero. Is in my calculator, I got 7.59. Uh, the unit for this is kilograms times meters per second. Part B. What is the total momentum of the system after two seconds? So this one is going to be, uh, let me move this up. Um, clear some of this out, whoops. Um, this is going to be momentum final, right? Because it's after our time. So in this one, I want to do momentum final. That equals momentum of the large, plus momentum of the small. This one's a little bit more complicated because, let's write it over here, momentum of final equals momentum of large plus momentum of the system. So now I can look at this. Momentum final equals uh, mass of large times velocity of large plus mass of small, velocity of small, again final. Okay, My mass of the large we said was 2.3. The velocity I can see right here is 5.5 plus right, the mass of the small, which was 1.5, and the velocity is negative 0.9. Don't forget the negative. It may not tell you that. It may make you reason through it. So this is 
one one point five times the velocity, which is negative point nine okay, meters per second. Okay. Plugging that into my calculator, I'm gonna get two point three times five point five minus because I got that negative in there, one point five times point nine. Then in this problem, I get my momentum final afterwards equals 11.3 kilograms times meters per second. Going down to the last one, it turns out the track was not level, which means a net force was acting on the system during the two seconds. Determine the magnitude of the net force that acted on the system. So. Um, let's think about an equation in this unit okay, that has these, even it gives you a hint, try impulse momentum theorem. So here uh, I know force times time equals all kinds of things. Okay? Um, let's think about if it's from some variables we have. Well here is momentum initial, here is momentum final. Anytime you have a final and initial, that's the same thing as delta. So that seems to work. Okay, would there be an easier way to solve it? Well, I could do mass times change in velocity, but I'd have to worry about both of them. Uh, then I could also do uh, impulse, but that's the same thing. So I like change in uh, momentum. That will tell you if you have a net force or not. And essentially, if momentum was conserved, well, we can already see right here, I believe this was like 3.59, we said, uh, and this momentum is definitely changed. That's because we have a net force, uh, is the ramp is essentially an outside force that is not the same on both of them. So now, let's give it a shot. So I need force. I don't know that. That's what I'm looking for. My time, it's two seconds have elapsed, equals the change in momentum, which is momentum final minus momentum initial. Uh, that wasn't uh, 3.59, this was 7.59. So final would be 11.3 minus 7.59 divided by 2. We can plug that in. And I have 11.3 minus 7.59 divided by 2. And I end up with a change in momentum of 7.5. So let's see, FT, not FTF, equals 7.51 Newtons, if I had to solve it. So now this one, uh, it got me, I made a mistake by how I put my numbers into the calculator. So if I do the numbers correctly, uh, I'll get a better answer. How I plug them in, uh, as my calculator showed, I ended up doing the divided by 2 here. So we got to be careful with order of operations. So let me try that one more time. 11.3 minus 7.59, enter. Then that divided by the 2. Here I end up with a force of 1.86. Now, I would have only lost one point for having the answers wrong, but if I had quality work, I, I would have only missed one. But if I didn't have quality work, I would have missed a lot of points there.